Now, I'm going to use the word I've used be here before, but being under command. I had Cody read that, the scripture this morning, and part of it was it, it, uh, it, he's in military. If, you, if you're in military, you know, understand about being under command. I haven't told this story for a long time, so I'm going to do it, because some of you haven't heard all my stories. Some of you heard them ten times, but you'll probably get the most out of it. But when I had a, uh, my, my dog, my first dog, Samson, a mutt, lab, um, before I, I was married to Lisa and before I had kids, thank God, my kids should be thanking God for Samson every day. God used Samson to help train me on how to raise kids. And, uh, but I, I decided I wasn't going to have some old wild farm dog that wasn't trained in anything, and I always felt bad for the dogs, not for the, you know, kind of get mad at the people that have dogs that won't train them. So I was going to go take this lab dog, you know, this, uh, you know and make him a sheep dog. Well, the Mexican sheep shears laughed at me and said, your dog's got the wrong ears to be a sheep dog. But anyway, I spent an awful lot of time with this dog, and this dog and I got to be really good friends. This dog was 70 pounds, would ride on my motorcycle. We'd go chase fox together, and at the right time, I'd tell him to jump, and he would jump forward and just stumble forward and go after that fox. Uh, by the way, timing's real important on that. There's a few times he saw a squirrel and jumped off the wrong direction, and that, that didn't go very well for him. But this dog, I, uh, for me, uh, I did my best, and I didn't know a lot of things, but what I did know I used, and this dog, was a, when he was under command, was an extremely obedient dog. Now, if we just were walking out in the woods and a rabbit took off and he took off after it, man, there, I could yell. I, could, I couldn't whistle, so i do my little thing. But uh, I could do all that, and he would just keep going, man. I couldn't call him back for anything. But if I had him under command, and all I did to do that was just say, Samson, heal. And as soon as he knew that he was healing and knew that we just, he knew he was under command, then when, I, and when I'd walk, he'd walk beside me. When I stopped, he sat down beside me. And then a rabbit could come up and kiss him on the lips, slap his face, and he'd just sit there and shake and look up at me once in a while. <laughs> and he wouldn't go until I said, okay. I mean, he was under command. I told him to stay once in the middle of a field because I was going to go irrigate, and he would just follow me everywhere all day long. He'd ride, roll, walk. You know, and I, didn't, and I was just going to go here. I had a washout. I was there for two hours. It was on a hot summer day, and my neighbor watched him. He was not sitting in a place where he normally was. He was just in the middle of this uh, field, whatever. I told him to sit, and I told him to stay. And for two hours, he stayed in that same spot. One thing I taught him to do is how to hold his paws on the sheep's head, because if you throw a sheep down, if he just keeps his paws on the head, the sheep can't get up. By the way, if you can't get your head up, you can't get up. Good point, huh? And uh, I had this one sheep that was just, every time I'd herd him out of the wrong field, he would run the other way. And then I just got fed up. I was either going to shoot it, which came real close. Uh, and what I did is I, I finally just threw it down, put Samson's paws on the, on the sheep's head, and say, stay. He hated this job. This is the one job he hated. Above all things, he hated holding a sheep down. And he just, he would, you know how dogs can look at you and just go, you know, Bleh. You know, and then I said, I'll be right back. So I took my motorcycle. I went down to the house to get a rope to tie it around this sheep and just drag it to the next field. And uh, I got down there, and I just newly married at this time, and, and Elisa had cookies and milk. And I went in the house and started having cookies and milk. And all of a sudden I go, oh, my dog's out there holding the sheep down. It'd probably been 20 to 30 minutes in the hot sun. Boy, I thought for sure he would uh, let that thing go and come home. And I got there, and you should have seen the look on his face. It was, didn't need all interpretation. Man, was he upset with me. But his f hands were still on that sheep. Hallelujah. He was under command. Hallelujah. It was, it was just absolutely amazing. And, but it taught me this. The value of that dog was incredible. Just absolutely incredible to me. 
of what he taught me and, and, and understanding that. And the difference when he was under command and when he wasn't under command was just radically different. And the Lord taught me back then. He said, do you understand what it means to be under command from me? To have a willingness to say, I'm listening to you. I'm not making a move till you tell me to. By the way, jumping back into Matthew 7, again, 23. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. What's lawlessness? It's reckless. It's free will. It's just no boundaries. It's whatever you feel like. That's exactly what my dog did when he wasn't under command. He... He ran up and down the creek. Uh, it's just a miracle my dog wasn't shot so many times. Because out in sheep country, when a dog's out by itself, the rule is shoot it. Because they can cause so many problems. He won so much favor with all the neighbors. When I moved to Sturgis, seven mile, or to Vail, seven miles away, he would still go out in the country and hunt the same creek that, we grew, uh, that I, I was where we were living. And more people saw him going back and forth, and they let him go. But he did whatever he wanted to. I wouldn't see him for several days. And then he'd come home. But when I, put it, when I asked him to be under command, he was not lawless. He would do whatever I asked him to do. Maybe with a bad attitude, but he'd, uh, he'd do. What a, sto what a picture of you and I today. Hallelujah. Go your way. Be it done to you as you have believed. And the servant was healed that very hour. Hallelujah. Are you coachable? Are you trainable? Are you willing to be under command? You know... Besides making the right choice to serve God, we have to know the right time, and we have to, we have to put them together. We can't be frantically worried and frustrated, and if we're in our own self-protection mode, we're not going to hear when you're under command. You're not worried about you. You're not panicky. You're not feeling vulnerable. You're, you come totally confident that Jesus has the absolute authority and he'll take care of you. And so you act just like him. You speak when you're supposed to speak and you keep your mouth shut when you're supposed to keep your mouth shut. What an incredible miracle that could be every day of your life. Living in, the, in, the, in an incredible place of having miraculous happen every day because you've trained yourself to be under command. Sure, there's some great inventions, great miracles to happen, but what an awesome thing to walk every day, waking up in the morning saying, Lord, Whatever you tell me to do, I'll do. Whatever you whisper to me, I'll do. Whatever you tell me to say, and when you tell me to keep quiet. Wouldn't that be an awesome one? I had the right to remain silent, but I what? But I lack the ability. How many conflicts would not happen if we would just be silent at the right time? How many conflicts could be resolved if we would speak up at the right time? the right words. How many things could totally turn for the better if we did what was right, when it was right, and with confidence? 